Let's get into it. <laughs> okay, anyway. So as you may have seen there, my phone is now playing a custom sound anytime that I'm charging it or, you know, take it off the charger. And that's all compliments of iOS 14. This is the latest trend, it seems. And before I even begin this video, huge thank you to everyone that watched the video regarding my setup and how I got it like this. I'll link it somewhere up here as well as in the description box. But if you're new to the channel, I'm Tech Me Out. What I like to talk about up here is pretty much anything in relation to technology. So if that is of interest to you, feel free to hit that subscribe button and the like button if you feel inclined to. But in today's video, what we're gonna talk about are some tips and tricks, things you may know or may not know that iOS 14 brings to your phone. Lord, let my phone make it through this video. I'm about, it's about to die. So with iOS 14 came a lot of changes. And thankfully, if you're one of those that have been holding off on updating because you think your phone's gonna automatically look like this, breathe. It will not. It does not automatically add widgets to your phone when you update to iOS 14. Customizing your phone to look like this is something that you have control over. You can keep your phone looking as it has been before iOS 14, or you can update it so that it looks like this. So a lot of the changes, like I said, are subtle. Like for instance, anytime that you connect a Bluetooth device to this, you're gonna get a little banner at the top. Now we're gonna get to the charging sound effect later in the video because it's a bit more advanced and you know we wanna ease our way up there. So something that you may or may not know is the fact that you can now filter your messages. Now I'll be able to sort your messages so that people in your contact list are in a certain group and those who are not or in another group. So the way you go about doing that is to head into your settings. I find it easier to kind of just search for things. So you're gonna search for messages filter, and then you're gonna tap the messages result here that pulls up, and you're gonna scroll down to filter unknown senders, and you're gonna to toggle that switch on. So now when you head into your messages app, and you'll notice now in the top left-hand corner, you have something called filters. So if you tap on that, it's gonna take you to the main page, which breaks down your messages. So you have all messages, which is everything, known senders, which are people in your contacts, and unknown senders, which are basically any numbers that aren't in your contacts. So then you can tap on that and view that information separately. Another new feature that you'll discover you have is the option to pin your contacts so that you have quick access to your favorite contacts at the top of your conversation list. Another cool feature within your messages is that you can reply to specific messages. So this is really helpful, especially when you're like in a group message and you want to respond to a specific message. You can long press on it, hit reply, and it'll create its own kind of conversation thread of the responses to that statement. One of my favorite things is the fact that we can now search for emojis because I don't care how many times I use an emoji, I can never find it unless it's in my recently used section. So you know how you might use Google Chrome instead of Safari and you wanna set that as your default browser? You can now do that by setting default apps for different things like mail or you know your web browser. But the way you go about doing it is to head into your settings, then you're gonna scroll all the way down till you get to your section of all of your apps. Once you're there, you're gonna find the app that you want. So we're gonna select Chrome here. And then you'll see an option that says default browser app. And then you're gonna select that and change it to the one that you want it to be. I personally like Google Maps. Um, Apple Maps has failed me one time too many, but unfortunately, currently at least, you cannot set Google Maps as your default Maps app. So that sucks, because I really, <laughs> that was the first thing I tried to do. Now something else that iOS 14 introduced are some you know, new privacy settings. So now when you tap on the eye next to the Wi-Fi network that you're connected to, you have an option that says private address. And what this is gonna do is help reduce the tracking of your phone across different Wi-Fi networks. So just a you know, extra level of security. On top of that, if you head into Safari and you tap you know, the little double A's in the top left, it's gonna allow you to get a privacy report. So if you tap on that, it'll then show you how Safari is protecting you against trackers from following you across different websites. Apple also stepped it up a notch by giving you visual indicators anytime that your camera or your mic is being used. So if your camera is being used, you're gonna see a green dot. And if your mic is being used, you'll see an orange dot. And while we're on the subject of sound, there's a new feature known as sound recognition. To gain access to this, you're gonna head into your settings, search for sound recognition, tap on it, and then you're gonna to toggle the switch so that it turns it on. And what this will do for you is give you a notification on your phone and your watch 
anytime certain sounds are heard. So you can go in here and turn on the sounds that you want to be notified about. But a feature that I am super duper excited about, it's a small one, is the option now that you have when you're in Apple Music and you have a playlist that you're listening to. You can now tap on the song at the bottom and you'll see that you have a new symbol. So what happens when you tap on that is that once your playlist is finished, it's then going to play other similar artists. I love that. That is something that was on Spotify that I missed when I went over to Apple Music. So it then goes from being a playlist to almost a station. And it's a great way to discover new music because that's how I discovered a lot of new music when I was using Spotify. Now, another feature you might like is spoken content. So this is gonna have your phone basically speak the text that it sees on the screen. So if you head into your settings and you search for speak content, and then you tap on that. You have your two options up here where it'll either speak the selection or it'll read the entire screen. So to activate it, you're gonna take two fingers, you're gonna swipe down from the top. Speak selection off. You speak can adjust the speed. On. On down speak selection means selected content. So you can hide it. Selection. But a really nice feature for those who might need it. FaceTime. This is a feature that is just like long overdue and that is the ability to navigate away from your FaceTime call but still be able to see the person that you're FaceTiming and have them see you. So now you can still edit your home screen as you're FaceTiming your friends. Cause let's face it, I think a lot of us are customizing our phones a lot more now that we have the option to. This is one step closer to split screen. A feature though that I'm really enjoying is the small call banner. So now when someone calls you, instead of it dominating your screen, you can just have a little banner at the top that appears that you can dismiss when you don't wanna answer your phone. And when you do that, you'll probably see a little phone icon in the top left. I know it tripped me out at first because I thought I accidentally answered the call. That's gonna allow you to tap on it in case you do change your mind and you wanna answer the call. But if not, it's just gonna continue to ring out of your way. If you wanna enable that or disable that, you're gonna first head into your settings, search for phone, find the section incoming calls, tap on it, and then select if you want a banner or full screen. I want a banner. <laughs> and while we're in the settings, let's search for back tap. So this is pretty cool because this is gonna allow you to basically tap the back of your phone and perform a specific action. So on mine, I have it set up so that if I triple tap the back of my phone, it'll take a screenshot. So to customize that after you search for it in your settings, you're gonna tap on touch and you're gonna scroll down to the bottom, select back tap, and then you're gonna select what happens if you double tap or triple tap. Now I chose a triple tap because I feel like I'm a double tap by accident a lot. Also with iOS 14, you know how you would go into an application and it would want access to your photos. You now have more control over that. So you can tell it that you want it to be able to only select specific photos or you can give it access to all of your photos. Now this to me is something that you might wanna do ASAP. And that's head into your settings to turn off precise location. So these apps that want your location by default will have precise location turned on. To turn this off, you're gonna head into your settings, scroll to the bottom where your apps are, find the one that you want to change. Then when you're on the location settings for that app, you're gonna turn precise location off. Now this next one is another one of my favorite features. <laughs> I know I have a lot of them. And that's the ability to hide a specific page. So to do that, you're gonna long press on your wallpaper. You're gonna get into wiggle mode or jiggle mode. You're gonna tap these three dots at the bottom and you can tap on the page in which you want to hide and then hit done and done again. And now that page is no longer there. But if I wanna bring it back, long press again, tap the dots at the bottom, tap the page that you want, select done, done, and it's back like it never left. This is so useful because say for instance, I have a certain setup when I'm traveling or a certain setup for work. I can have these pages be visible and hidden when I need them to be. And for those of you that have the, you know, cluttered home screen, you can move apps to what's known as the app library. And if you're from Android, you can basically look at that as like your, you know, app drawer. So it's gonna move the apps off the home screen and put them in a section when you swipe all the way to the left so that you can access them from within here and it's gonna automatically group them and everything. You're gonna see your main apps that you use as the first three icons here. But if you tap on this cluster of icons, it's gonna open up the folder that has all of the apps. So if you wanted to move an app there, you would long press on it and then you would select remove app and it'll ask you, do you wanna delete it or move it to your app library? You would tell it to move it to the app library and then it would be over here. 
If you want to bring it back, you're going to long press, add to home screen, and then it'll jump back to your home screen. You can even set it so that when you download an app, it automatically goes to your app library instead of your home screen. Clutch. Now this section of the video is going to be a little bit more advanced and a little bit more tedious. So consider this your warning label. <laughs> Widgets and shortcuts. So I touched on this in my setup video and I'm not going to dive into how I made my shortcuts, but I will give you a tip that somebody gave me and that's the option for the app to load a little bit faster. So to do that, you're going to head into your settings and you're going to search for reduce motion. You're going to tap on that search result and then you're going to toggle that on. And it basically just makes the transitions smoother as you're jumping in and out of applications so that it's not so abrupt and obvious that it opened up the shortcuts app before it opened up the actual app. And for those of you that are using Widgetsmith for your widgets, you can actually export the widgets in which you have made. So maybe you have a setup that somebody likes. Instead of walking them through how to do it, you can just open up your Widgetsmith app, head into settings, and there's a section there to share and export your widgets. You can select the ones that you want and then select export. And then, you know, go on about sharing it to who you want. Now for that charging sound, this is how you do it. We're gonna head into your shortcuts app. We're gonna select automation down here at the bottom. We're gonna hit the plus symbol in the top right here. And then we're gonna hit create personal automation. And then we're gonna scroll down to the bottom and we're gonna select charger. So you can set it so that it does a custom sound when you're connecting to the charger and when you're disconnecting or so that it does the same sound regardless of which one you're doing. So in this case, I'm gonna select when it's connected. Then I'm gonna tap on next, add action, and then I'm going to search for speak text. Stay with me, we're almost there. What you're gonna type here is what you want your phone to say when it connects to the charger. So I'm going to say something simple like charging, but you can get creative and make it say what you want. And I'm gonna hit done. Now to sample what it sounds like, you're gonna hit play. Charging. Sounds good. So we're gonna hit next. And we don't want it to ask before it runs this command. So we're gonna turn that off and then we're gonna select done. So now when I charge my phone here, charging, it'll say charging. Um, and then I could set it maybe so that when I disconnect it, it says not charging. Like you can get creative here, but the real creativity comes when you take it to the more advanced version. Oh my God. So to do that, you're gonna to need to download this shortcut called Base64, and I'm gonna link that down below in the description for you. Now, if you get hit with the prompt that it can't add the shortcut, you're gonna to have to head into your settings and turn on the option for it to add untrusted shortcuts. Now, once you have that Base64 shortcut up here, you then want to find the sound file that you want. You can get real fancy here and maybe find like maybe one of your favorite sayings on YouTube and then head over and extract the audio using something like YouTube to MP3. Bottom line though, save that sound on your phone in something like the files app. When those two steps are complete, we're then going to head to the actual base 64 shortcut and we're going to run it by tapping on it. You should then be greeted with the screen that's going to let you select your file. You're then going to search for the file that you want, select it, and you should see a long script of text. Just hit the share icon right here and select copy. Then you're going to tap done. After you've done that, you're then gonna hit automation down here at the bottom. We're gonna tap the plus symbol, create personal automation, scroll all the way down to charger, select when you want this sound to play. So I'm gonna leave it at when it's connected, select next, and then we're gonna select add action. This time we're gonna search for text. You're gonna choose it. And then we're gonna tap here in the text field and we're gonna paste what we copied. Then we're gonna tap that plus symbol. And then we're gonna search for base 64. We're gonna choose the shortcut. And then we're gonna change where it says encode to decode. I know y'all. Then we're gonna tap the plus symbol and we're gonna search for play sound. We're gonna select it. And the sound file when we tap here should be base 64, so we should be good to go. Now, if you did this correctly, when you hit play, you should hear the custom sound. So we're gonna see. And I, oh. uh -huh. We in business. So to finalize things, we're gonna hit next, and we're gonna turn off ask before running. We're gonna say don't ask, and then we're gonna hit done. And now anytime I charge my phone, I should hear 
So yeah, that's what mine does. But for those of you that do decide to customize the charging sound, please let me know what you made it down below in the comment section because I'm just curious what y'all might just create with that type of customization option. Now we'll be getting the new iPhone and I do plan to cover that. So I do hope you stick around and we get to see each other again. Hit that subscribe button so we can make that happen. And as always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.